Sorry for that interruption. That was Comcast telling me my service was restored when it wasn't restored and if I was still having problems, I should dial one while waiting on the phone. And I dialed one and then they said, well, I'm sorry, the service is not available. Guess what? So now we're back here. 1839 is when this particular book is printed. And you can get it yourself. The title for the CD is 250 Rare Bibles. This is on disc one, and it's called New Version of the Psalms of David, as you can see up here in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner. New Version of the Psalms of David. And you can see that it's an actual copy of a book somebody actually owned. Okay. Fitted to the tunes to be used in churches. Oh, stupid. Adobe never figures out that dark blue doesn't work on black. Okay? To the tunes to be used in churches. And this isn't by the Bay, you know, the Bay Psalm book. This is a new translation by Ann Tate and Ann Brady. And as you can see here, it's 1839. Down at the bottom, the MDCCCXXXIX. And to confirm that, yes, that's the right number, here you see 1839 in the lower right-hand corner. Now, what's really interesting about this is when you come up here, a new version of the Psalms of David. This is Psalm 1. Now, count the syllables in English, because we already talked about this before in the 1640 book. Look, how blessed is he who ne'er consents by ill advice to walk. That's 14 syllables, exactly like the 1640 count of the Hebrew. So it's looking at the same Hebrew text in 1839 that the writers were looking at in 1640, and I'm looking at the same text both of them are looking at. So honey, we got the same Hebrew text. You got that? Second clause nor stands in sinners ways nor sits where men profanely talk that's another 14 syllables now this is a better translation than what i showed you before okay for english it's a better translation it it makes a little free with the hebrew words but it has the same root meaning and they chose to make it rhyme because in 1800s rhyming was important I was I swear I was raised to rhyme. I can I could talk all day rhyming if I wanted to. Then I would bore everybody to death. Just look at that for a minute. Now if you remember the last video, I showed you Psalm one online, which I can't do now. See, because I have no internet access. Well, I can't show you that I have no internet access. Because this thing, when it records in 64 bits, it won't let me show the, the control panel. Okay. But it's 28 syllables in verse 1, according to the 1640 Bay Psalm, Bay, Bay Psalm book, that some guy named David, also named David, paid $14 million for in 2013, which you can see in the wiki entry. And it's now currently on loan to the Library of Congress. This book in front of your face now is two centuries later, 1839. A new translation, but still counting by the Hebrew syllables to make the English ones. You got that? What does that tell you? Think about it. The first book printed in 1640 in the United States is of the Psalms? 20 years after Roanoke? So Roanoke was no, by no means alone for, you know, in, all by itself mysteriously disappearing in 1620. Printing press is not the first thing you build when you create a town. You have to create your housing first. You have to find water. You have to find a way to cook. It takes several weeks at least just to build one house. 
because you got to cut the wood, you got to strip the wood, you got to maybe polish the wood, you got to maybe treat it with pitch so it'll be able to keep out the rain. And the first book they want printed is the Psalms. What does it tell you about Bible interest in 1640? Okay, and what you're looking at on screen is 1839. Two centuries later, almost to the day, to the year. And they're still using the same style to translate the Psalms, counting the Hebrew syllables. So for 200 frickin' years, the idea of counting the syllables to translate, to count the syllables in the Hebrew was known. Okay, was known. Here we go, you're looking at it. First we saw 1640, now on front of your screen, that same Psalm 1 verse 1. It's got the same syllable count as the one in 1640. So people were paying attention to the syllable counts and they were paying attention to what went before in the English translations of them. You got that? So what happened to the scholarship? How come a brain out thinks, oh, well, gee, you know, Isaiah 53 is metered. Well, they knew the Psalms of David were metered. Why didn't they think the same thing of Isaiah 53? And why didn't they say, think the same thing of Genesis 1? Because it's metered too. Every first chapter of every Bible book I've looked at so far is metered. Now, maybe the other ones are too. But, I, you know, I'm 63 years old. I'm not going to live forever to be able to do all this. But somebody else have done, has done it. You're looking at it. Now what is this telling you? It's really bloody important. This is like the most important Christmas gift you can probably get this year. Yes, we have the original words of God. How come we know that? Because the same Hebrew text in 1640 that they used to translate in English that you've already seen is the same text that they're using here in 1839. They're just translating the English differently. And you see why. It's a clearer, simpler, more catchy translation, easier to remember. That was why the original text in the Bible was metered in the first place, to make it easy to remember. So what happened to the scholars? Don't tell me that none of them ever knew what I'm telling you for the past eight years. I don't believe it. So what happened? They, they're no longer po you know, popular? Or the scholars aren't interested in this anymore? How can you not be interested in what proves we have the original words of God? So much so that people are counting the syllables in those words to create their translations, which is what we all ought to do. How come that's not being done? It was being done from 1640 to 1839. You got the proof of it right on your screen. Now, have I abstracted and counted the Hebrew syllables and the other verses and all this? No, not yet, but I'm going to have to now. I've been looking for this proof for 14 years. How can a brain out discover the meter and it was never known before? Who am I? Well... I'm just a brain out. And a whole bunch of other brain outs knew to do the same thing from 1640 to 1839. But the scholars didn't care. What other conclusion can you draw? Okay? So, again, how do you get this? Because I don't want to put it in the video description. Again, you can order this yourself. The name of the CD to order is called 250, put that in numbers, 250, 250 Rare Bibles, and you order it from the old CD bookshop at gmail.com. This stuff is all public domain, okay? This is 1839, it's public domain. If you can find it online and download it from online, well, do that. But this particular CD, let's see if I can show you that. I can't show you that. 
Okay. Uh, this particular CD um, is got a lot of Bibles on it, but now the thing has locked up, so I'm going to have to end this video. Again, the old CD bookshop at gmail.com is where you can see this for yourself and count the Hebrew syllables for yourself. Okay? Peace out.